If you clicked on this video, chances are you made a conscious decision to do so. For some reason, this video has caught your attention and you maneuvered your finger to click and see what it's about. I mean, I don't blame you. I did take my sweet time making this video. It would be a shame if no one saw it, right? Well, your decision to watch this video was probably made by the squishy little meat sack inside of your head. Neural impulses inside your brain fired in such a way that caused you to notice this video and subsequently watch it. But why did that happen? Well, we could simplify it down to the fact that you are interested or bored enough to watch whatever was most entertaining. Assuming this is entertaining. But in taking that route, we missed the fundamental process that took place and allowed that to happen. People make decisions all the time, sometimes good, sometimes very bad. But what is rarely discussed is how we are able to make decisions and why. Well, our conscious minds didn't always start out that way. We began with simple impulses that were communicated from the body and to the brain. These impulses, our signals, gave us information about the world in a way we could understand it. Instead of receiving wavelengths of light of 380 to 700 nanometers in length and trying to interpret what that means, we are instead given brains that can automatically process this information and make it understandable. These impulses have been formed over millions of years into what we know them as now. Think of them as neural shortcuts which allow us to understand the world through the lens of our, well, eyes. Without these impulses, and more importantly a brain to understand them, we cease to understand the world around us. Now this is fair and all, but how does this explain consciousness? Well, relax, I'm getting to that. Consciousness is a complex system that we still don't know everything about. What we do know is that it is formed by the brain and that it may serve some evolutionary purpose. I mean if it didn't, it probably wouldn't have survived through so many generations. But. There may be reason to suggest that a more conscious organism would be more fit for making decisions for the survival of its faction. As early humans developed, there could have been merit in choosing mates that had a better understanding of the world and thus better suitable for reproduction and caring for offspring. But a more interesting stance is that consciousness evolved alongside the sensations of pain and pleasure. In this argument, it is believed that pain and pleasure are driving forces and involving higher order thinking like consciousness. It is believed that volitional action is what drives organisms to become conscious in the first place. Giving an organism the option to choose pain or pleasure allows it to discern and make choices on its own. This would also apply to animals in some regard as they make decisions and consciously choose pleasure and avoid pain, but to a lesser degree. They do not think about the consequences of overindulging or can even grasp the basic principles of science and arithmetic. We are different because we are able to think in terms of the abstract. Can you imagine trying to teach your dog basic calculus and physics or even explain to them what tomorrow is? Hell no! That dog is lost beyond a reasonable doubt. It's stupid stupid dog. dog. Consciousness also gives us flexibility. Consider two zebras. One is a zombie zebra that has zero consciousness and just has neural programming. The other has a lesser form of consciousness. When approached by a lion, the zombie zebra runs away but has no programming that says it shouldn't run into a herd of elephants. This zebra then gets trampled and does not pass on its genes. However, in the case of a slightly conscious zebra, it has the ability to run but also acknowledge there is a herd of elephants it should avoid. The zebra avoids the herd, lives, and passes on its genes. Now this is a simplified version of what could have actually happened when considering the inheritance of consciousness, but the point remains. Consciousness is a very useful survival tactic. But hey, consciousness is pretty cool, right? Being able to be aware of everything all the time shouldn't have its downfalls, right? Well, wrong. Consciousness to the degree of self-realization means we have the capacity to love and hate ourselves with no limit. No other animal on this planet has the capacity to do away with oneself like humans. No other animal on this planet has to pay bills or go to school or work like humans. We are gifted and cursed at the same time. So does this mean we shouldn't be conscious and it's better to be blissfully unaware? Well, maybe? And this depends on how you view your world. Being conscious allows us to make decisions and take actions that an unconscious entity would never have the ability to make. 
We get to explore the world and try things we may never have dreamed of unconsciously. We also get to experience the beauty of the world like no other organism. We are able to enjoy it with moderation or without limit because we are conscious. Yes, bad things happen, however, being blissfully unaware wouldn't make these problems go away. If you don't like the way things are, guess what? You are aware. You can do something about it. Being conscious gives way to free will that you are able to enact in any way you see fit. You have been gifted with the conscious mind and it is your choice if you decide to use it or not. Anyway, that's about all I have for this video. I would say subscribe, but I don't know when the next video will be out. So if you did like the video, go on ahead and hit that like button and share this with your granny or something or uh, maybe your dog. Do they have phones? I don't know. Share it with both just in case. See you.